Greg Cott with the Chicago Tribune here at day two of the Pitchfork Music Festival in Union Park. It's just about wrapping up right now. We've had uh, nine hours of music today. Started very early, one o'clock in the afternoon. Still rolling here nearly 10 o'clock uh, at Pitchfork. Uh, good day of music. Started off with uh, one of the most promising new bands out there at the moment, Symbols Eat Guitars. Uh, one of the things I found with uh, covering a festival like this, especially Pitchfork, which is geared toward newer and up-and-coming bands, is that some of these bands aren't quite ready yet to play these big outdoor venues. I mean, we're talking about playing in front of 19,000 people. A lot of these bands are coming off, uh, you know, basement shows where they've been playing in front of 50, 100, 200 people. Suddenly you're confronted with 19,000 people on a big outdoor stage. How do you handle it? I think Cymbals Eat Guitars is a band that needs a little more seasoning before they can play a big stage like this one. They've got the songs, they don't have the stage presence right now, but I look forward to seeing them in another year and to see where they're at. But that was not a problem with a band called Effed Up. I can't say their proper name for a family newspaper or a family video such as this one. But uh, they were one of the best bands out there today. Uh, frontman Damon Abraham was a presence to be reckoned with. He looked like a, an outcast from the cast of the uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre or something like that. Walked out on stage, immediately tried to eat several beach balls when he got up there. People were tossing the beach balls up there. He was biting them and ripping them in half. One he decided to wear on his head for a while was in the crowd for probably 80% of the set uh, while his band was banging it out behind him. One of the issues that was raised during their set, however, was a sound problem on the main stage. Some of the sound was not up to par. I think uh, Pitchfork in order to be uh, the A-plus festival that it can be, right now it's probably at, at an A level, to be an A-plus festival is going to have to work out some of those sound problems that marred the set by effed up. Another one of the up-and-coming bands that's been very much hyped this year played the festival, The Pains of Being Pure at Heart, five-piece band out in New York. Uh, they remind me a lot of uh, those late 80s, early 90s shoegazer bands out of England, bands like Lush, bands like My Bloody Valentine, Big Wall of Guitars, kind of soft melodies over the top. Uh, even further back, going to the shop assistants and that C86 scene out of England. Uh, reference points all over the place with this band. I love that sound personally. I've heard it many times. They don't do a particularly outstanding version of it. They don't allow you to it. For somebody who's never heard those bands, I can understand why they would be an attractive band to get to know. But as far as I'm concerned, uh, they're not exactly a, a brave new thing, something that we need to look forward to. They're not really advancing that sound uh, and making it anything particularly great. One of the bands I did love today was Ponytail, and in particular the antics of front woman Molly Siegel. Uh, a band that loved to be on stage, you loved to watch them because they bring so much enthusiasm to what they were doing. Uh, two guitarists in the band were playing these spidery guitar lines and these whomping rhythms from the drummer. Uh, and uh, Molly Siegel, the uh, front person in the band, just having a ball dancing up a storm up there. Uh, vocals uh, in that wordless vocal tradition of Yoko Ono and the B-52s where you didn't quite understand every word she was saying, using her voice almost as another instrument in the band. One woman walked by me and said, this is kind of wacky. Uh, so I can understand this is not a band for everybody, but uh, for my taste, uh, one of the most enthusiastic performances I've seen all weekend. Yay Sayer had the moment of the festival uh, this year so far uh, when they played their hit song Sunrise uh, in the aftermath of a driving rain, suddenly the sun burst out. Just as the song was ended, the band turning to the western sky as the sun burst out, raised their hands in triumph. It was a glorious festival moment for Yay Sayer. Another fine set by Beirut, a uh, band without an electric guitar player in it. Uh, electric bass, but no electric lead guitar. Instead, the focus is on horns, ukulele, accordion, uh, a wonderful set of mariachi gypsy world music uh, on the main stage today. Ramping up today's festival, you can hear them in the background right now, The National, one of my very favorite bands working today. Uh, a band originally out of Ohio have moved to Brooklyn, where everybody seems to be moving these days if you want to be a rock band. They have a sense of brooding song craft, these kind of melancholy songs with an undercurrent of violence. And when that violence 
rises to the surface in the song, it's really jarring. Uh, you feel like your your you know mountains are moving when when they hit those moments in these songs, those crescendos. Uh, so they played to these big crowds really well. I saw them open for REM last year at the United Center, and that's when I realized this band can really translate uh, to bigger crowds, and they're proving it once again tonight. So a great ending to day two of the Pitchfork Music Festival. We're going to be back for the third and final day tomorrow.